sort of throwing all this new language and notation at you, which you guys know means I'm trying to develop something, I'm trying to set a foundation on top of which we can build, right? So remember, if you have some function of x, we'll just call it f for function, but of course, you can call it anything, you can call it g, or h, or a, or, it's just the label. Given that function, we define the gradient function and we sort of hijack function notation, right? So we say, look, the gradient function is a function, so therefore I can write it like this, right? You input an x value and you will get out an output which is the gradient. We indicate the dash to say, look, uh, it's, it's like f of x, it's related, but it's not the same thing. Uh, we call it the derivative because it comes from, it proceeds from the original function. And then we did all this fancy geometry with rise over run and secants and tangents to come up with this right hand side over here, which is a bit of a mess, but it just had two important pieces. What was the first piece? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an L. Yeah, I heard it, right? The limit. The very first thing we have to write down is a limit because we want a tangent at a single point, not a secant at two points, right? So we want the distance between these two points to be zero. And then what follows is this fraction. Before you tell me what's in the fraction, what is the fraction? What does it represent? It's just gradient. It's just rise over run. In the particular setup that we had, the rise was what? f of x plus h. And you take away f of x. So there's your rise. The run, of course, is going to be this horizontal distance here, h. Let me add a little um, uh, note onto this. This is not the only way to write this. Um, for example, because this little distance here, right, is a horizontal distance. It's just a change in x. It's just a change in x. So sometimes you will see this written as the limit, not as h approaches 0, but as delta x approaches 0. Uh, again, trying to go back to this idea of delta d indicating a little change, just a change. Okay. Uh, therefore, you can see on the right-hand side, well, everywhere you saw h's, you will write delta x instead. So this would be f of x plus delta x, and on the bottom, delta x. Okay? Uh, you won't see this as frequently. This is far more common. This is kind of like 95% uh, of the times you will see first principles written in a textbook or an exam, or in working, this is what you'll see. But occasionally you'll see this. I hope you can see it's just the same thing dressed up slightly differently. There is one more form that I want to show you, which is probably more important and will be for later in this lesson. Which is that we just describe these two points, x and x plus h, which is like a little bit further, right? As the two points on our secant, right? Well, you can think of another version of this. You can think about what happens if you've got two completely different points. Let's just call one of them c and one of them x, right? So you've got one point at the end of your secant, one point at the beginning, and what you really want is to bring them close together. So as c approaches x, you go from a secant to a tangent. Does that make sense? What you get on the right-hand side is exactly the same as what you had before. It's just still rise over run, right? Except instead, it will be, let me make sure I get my order right here, because there's a couple of different ways to write this. I'm pretty sure it's c and then x. Yeah, it is. Good. f of c, f of x, c minus x. Can you see, this is see, this is just the same thing, right? It's still rise over run. It's just at two slightly different spots. Bless you. Okay? Okay, so all these kinds of things. The gradient function is the way we described it. The other name which we said started with a d was the derivative, right? <laughs> because it came from your original function. An alternative way of writing this, yeah. So when did we use y dash or d Yeah, sure, okay, let's, let's get right to that. So given f of x, you know, everything is in function notation,
But if you get given something else, right? If given y equals something in here, right? Another function of x, okay? Then instead of using f dash, like there's no f written here, there's no label for f, so you can't say f dash. The mark will say what's f, right? In this case, y is just the label. Now, I can use this notation, that dash there, I can use it just like I did over here, right? So I can say y dash is the gradient function, is the derivative. Let me pause on that while I take your question. Can you, uh, can you write that y equals, uh, y equals f of x? If I say let y equal f of x, like that, can you see, having written this, I now can use either of these, right? Because y and f of x have both been introduced now. So I can use y dash, like I've just done here. I could use f dash, because they are, after all, different labels for the same thing. Does that make sense? Now, let me just put a quick note here. You will see this written. You'll see it in exams. You'll see it in textbooks. Um, you need to recognize when someone says y dash, what on earth they're talking about. That's why I'm telling you about it. But I'm going to discourage you from ever writing it. Here's why. If I said to you, oh, OK, uh, how do you read that? Just not a rhetorical question. How do you read it? Next bit, sure. How about this? How do you read that? Sounds fine to me. How about that? Looks like x to the power of 11, right? Doesn't it? What about that? Now, at least I'm sure I'm not the only one. When I'm writing, like just normal handwriting, my ones and my dashes look identical. If you type them, they do look slightly different. A dash looks something like this. Uh, it's kind of got a bit of a rounded bit at the top and then it's pointy at the bottom. Whereas if you type a one, it's, you know, it gets all its serifs and all that kind of thing. But when we write it, when we write it, they look exactly the same, okay? So I'm going to discourage you from ever writing this because as you're gonna see in later this lesson, we sometimes mean that as a one. And then other times we mean it as a dash. Like, are you asking to communicate in an unclear way and be confusing? So I never write this except for when I'm telling people what it means so that when you read it, and you see this, you know what it's talking about, okay? If you have y's in here, I think it's far more preferable to say dy on dx. What does that mean again? What does it mean? It means the change in y over the change in x is just a fancy way of saying y's over run. Now, um, this last thing here raises a new thing, a new idea. Here we go. Which is that, I want you to now think about y being some function, okay? dy on dx is the derivative, the gradient function, okay? But if you look carefully at this, it's kind of like the process of differentiating is written as this part of the notation. Do you see that? There's a, the d on the top, and then there's an on dx, and then the y is what you're applying this process to. Right? That's the process of differentiating. So therefore, d on dx is like sine or cos or log in that it's something which you can put other things into it. We, have a, we call it the differential operator. Um, we call it the differential operator because the thing it does is differentiate. We call it the differential operator because it does and it operates on something, it, it has a function, right? As opposed to say, uh, well, at, you know, similar to sine. This is an operator as well. That doesn't mean anything on its own. You have to say sine of what? You'd say sine of x or sine of theta, right? But sine on its own doesn't mean anything because it's an operator. Uh, it's the same with log, uh, log base two. Log base 2 of what? You'd have to supply some kind of value in there, right? Same deal over here. Don't do what I used to do when I was in year 11 because I didn't know what this thing was. I just thought, oh, questions are asking me to differentiate. 
This is the thing that says differentiate. So I would write things like this. You know, blah, blah, blah. This doesn't make sense because there's nothing here being differentiated. Okay? So the way I would read this is differentiate whatever comes next. And if I have a y there, like this, then it means differentiate that function. Does that make sense? But of course, as a shorthand, rather than writing the y over there, we tend to write it up on the top, just so it looks like the rise over run that we're familiar with. So far, so good? 